Welcome back to the Juicy Vapor channel. I'm Chef Andy and today we're doing an informative video on DIY supplies uh, that you'll need to have in order to start making your own e-juices. Having said that and before I get going, um, this will not be making a, a recipe here. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the machine side of things. I'm going to go over what you need to have as far as your materials and workstation go to effectively make a good e-juice. Now, I happen to be on a budget and so I decided to start looking at different areas that I could probably save some money and what started as kind of a little hobby has become something a little bit more. Um, I mean I get kind of crazy in this and because yes I'm actually Chef Andy and I actually worked in kitchens and I actually went through and, and did culinary school. Uh, you know, uh, this here to me is kind of the hybrid between uh, chemistry and I would probably go with, with gravies or sauces and baking. Why? Because everything's measured. And the thing about this is there are very few areas that you can afford to go a little under and go a little over. Mostly those should be in the way of flavor and sweetener. Um, everything else could have some more negative cause and effects. I will go over those things separately. Again, I will put some video down below about deciding between VG and PG and all that good stuff. Uh, so having said that, one more little... Inhale and then we'll get going. How about that, huh? All right. So, you want to start learning how to do some DIY. Vape juice, that is. E-juice. Some of the things you'll need. Um, let's get started with the, uh, the actual ingredients uh, that you'll at least need to get started. These can vary a little bit. But I'm going to show you the basics, okay? I have, there you can see that pretty good, right? That is USP Vegetable Glycerin, kosher. Uh, I also have another one of these. Uh, if you've ever wondered the, the acronyms here, what those mean, VG is Vegetable Glycerin. PG is Propylene Glycol. And again, I have both, all right? Uh, because different recipes you're going to want to, to switch it up uh, and that'll come when you get a better grasp and understanding of the different machines and coils and your own needs and allergies and all that other good stuff and that's part of the other stuff we're going to put down in the information section and uh, again uh, my information if you'd not like to ask privately my emails there on the banner you know like subscribe uh, and we'll go from there how about that all right Next, okay, so this is going to be a biggie for people that are trying to stop smoking. If you are trying to stop smoking, then I would urge you not to jump into uh, making your own DIY right now, but I'm going to make this comment specifically for you because I used tobacco for over 20 years, and I've been off of it for five and a half years, so yes, there is salvation at the end of this road. So, nicotine. Now, this nicotine happens to be 100% uh, in its concentration. There are others that you can get which are 24 uh, and on up. Those are the strengths. I get 100 because I want it to be a one-to-one -one measuring. What I mean by that is when you're dealing with this, you might have to use more nicotine if you buy a lesser strength, let's say 24% concentrate. The 100% lets you know right up front that, okay, it's, it's going to be on the measuring, it's going to be one-to-one. -one. So if it says, like for me, I use the DIY calculator called eJuice Me Up. I'll put that link down below. It's free. You can Google it. Uh, and it's going to ask you the strength of your nicotine. So if you're dealing with lesser strengths, then the more nicotine you have to use. Here's the deal with that. Nicotine inherently, I used to use a lesser strength, but then I realized my e-juices weren't having the great flavor that I had been by, by that I had been trying in different in different uh, vape shops and stuff like that. 
through my own playing around and tinkering, I realized that that nicotine, again, inherently takes on, uh, I should say, the VG or PG base that they use. Let me reverb that there. Uh, inherently takes on the nicotine. And if you have to use more of it because of the strength being in low concentrate, it will affect the taste of your e-juice. I hope that I explained that correctly. If I didn't, please message me. I will go over that in more detail or I'll type something out below. Uh, so I'm going to move on in the interest of keeping it short and informative. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need, if you're like me, I like a little bit of sweetener. Okay. Now this sweetener is really cool because I'm diabetic and this sweetener right here that I have is actually made and I can make it but I just prefer to buy it uh, it's very affordable it's it's made with sucralose which is the same stuff that you'd have in your in your uh, uh, not your aspartanes like uh, and I'm just losing it right there aren't I your Splenda your, like your Splenda and I think you can even use uh, Stevia it's not like your what are those in pink and blue packets whatever the ones with all that aspartame taste. Now it tastes good, made with sucralose, the same thing you'll find in, in your in your Splenda, that type of thing. And a, and and really I'm gonna share this with you too. I thought that perhaps I would get like some aftertaste. None. Uh, but you do have to show restraint when using it. And that is a subject again for another video. Alright, now I didn't pull out all of my flavors but you're gonna want some concentrates these are flavor concentrates basically you're gonna add these to your VGPG then you're gonna add your sweetener and your nicotine and these are the basic ingredients notice I'm using keyword ingredients these are your ba basic <laughs> ingredients that you'll need to build your uh, your DIY flavors again so you're gonna have concentrates whatever it is this one here happens to be plum and Dr. Pop which is a knockoff of Dr. Pepper these are concentrates they are not full e-juices in other words it only takes a little bit to get that flavor uh, you don't have to buy you know a whole bottle and mix it in uh, or I'm sorry and put it right into your vape you can make a lot more and it saves a lot of money so different flavors uh, and I'll share a good couple websites that I know that I go to get flavors from on my concentrates. And it is a very short list of companies that I do go, go through. Uh, simply because I trust them. I trust their product. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty picky about the short list of companies I go to get my ingredients. Now, let's move on to uh, cross-contamination. I think first and I'm gonna move things back here just a little bit okay let's uh, let me let me change what I said there and cross-contamination is a byproduct of an unclean workspace I happen to be very very OCD maybe it was because I worked in a kitchen and I'm not that clean in my normal life but when it comes to things like this I am absolutely uh, uh, put my foot down, will not sacrifice this part of the process whatsoever. I cannot stress this enough. Okay? So let's move through this after I take one more. How about that? By the way, just so y'all know, I am using my own DIY. It's Kiwi Watermelon. It is a 50-50 VGPG blend, uh, and it's got 3% nicotine by volume. And you'll see on here that little label. I'm going to talk about that little label here coming up in a few minutes. All right. Let me put this back down. You'll notice here I have a, a clean workspace. This here is a cutting board that I used to use in the kitchen. Now... You're going to want a stable worktop. I happen to have a pretty good table here. Uh, but if you're working on a counter or something like that, especially a smooth surface, I recommend putting down either 
if you have a colored or white kitchen towel the reason for this is it creates an area here for your cutting board and stops it from sliding see this it stops it from sliding all over the place now the key little tip that I learned there was I actually learned that in my culinary classes uh, because we had to work on various different surfaces so it kind of carried over uh, into this little work section here so that again the reason see how see how the area is kind of going back and forth a little with my hand and it's not sliding the reason that's important is when you put something down and you go to put something else like let's say a container or, or whatever uh, you don't want it to slide and spill trust me it's easier to take the one or two extra steps to do this process so if you don't have one of these white kitchen towels that's okay you don't need one uh, but I do recommend that you use a kitchen towel with some texture on it and something that'll go under you don't have to use a cutting board like I do I just prefer to do that because it has grooves here and if there's some spillage then I know I can catch it here in these grooves but also it's white so I can see uh, various different types of chemical or whatever spillage on here a lot easier okay so we have that going on next I have another white towel right here and that is used for spillage but I also don't limit myself to that I keep a roll a paper towels nearby because I want to be able to wipe up things like I said cross-contamination if, if you're not really sure what cross-contamination is in the culinary world we talk about uh, things like salmonella and uh, all those other good things that come from bad rotten foods or whatever uh, and, and they cross-contaminate what that means is you've taken something that you might have got on your hand you didn't wash it you then touched another surface that came in contact with something else and then got transmitted somewhere else and that can go on all the way down to being in somebody's mouth and providing them with some kind of illness because you did not show cleanliness washing of hands cleaning your area cleaning your utensils those same things can happen here but it happens in a little bit different way let me explain so let's say I take uh, some of this nicotine right here very 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 strong concentrate this used properly can be somewhat of a tool there are some health benefits to it however it's it, it's it's um, also a, a poison it can get you sick and what I'll say is you know like this the bottle spills now I've got the cap on it but so I'm going to ask you to use your imagination the caps on it right now but I've just moved this this surface and the bottle spilled the cap wasn't on it it's not just enough to wipe this up what if I've now just kind of smeared it around I put my hand on it or some other utensil and that was transmitted let's say a kid came by or I forgot all about it and let's say I just I ran my hand across my mouth or whatever that could get you sick it really can <coughs> The best case scenario is all that happens is you have a flavor of e-juice that tastes off because you didn't properly clean your workspace so it kind of carried over and affected the taste uh, and, and smell sometimes, uh, somehow, pardon me. That's the best case scenario. So I hope that you'll heed my case, my call, my preaching on workspace cleanliness now that's not just it either I always keep a bottle I don't have it here it's in my in my other room there uh, getting ready to be refilled but I carry uh, a bottle uh, with a spritzer and it has basically it's a mixture of alcohol and water the reason why that's so important is because when you're cleaning down an area <coughs> it's the best place it's the best way to disinfect now you can use other things around your house just keep in mind that if you're using things that have like a color tint to them you're still going to wash that afterwards because if it has a color it means it has additives and additives can also get you sick so always make sure that 
you complete those steps. Personally, I, I like to do all of it when it comes to this because I don't take chances. And on the last bit of preaching on cleanliness, I always and, and carry this box right up here, Nitro. This is from when I was in culinary and they work just fine. You can also buy them online. I think you can get them at Walmart. They're nitro uh, gloves. I use blue. There's other colors. I just prefer blue for a few different reasons. Um, now, there's a few other little things uh, that we also uh, like to use here. And I'll just, I'll just use these. Q-tips. Um, if you are cleaning out uh, a, a poor spout in a bottle or just your drip tip on your mod q-tips are a great way to clean those areas up and, and get the gunk moving past all that getting the gunk out and all that uh, okay containers and measuring so I like to uh, have this 150 mil goes all the way from 15 mil milliliters to 150 mil if you're using standard which you probably will not do uh, it goes everywhere from one tablespoon to ten tablespoons. I like this again because it even does the 15 milliliter. For me, that's about the smallest size uh, that, as far as tinctures, and I think that's I think you can find 10 milliliters, but those are mostly plastic bottles. So tinctures like this one here that you might buy, this one's empty. That's 15 milliliters. Uh, by the way, a uh, quick note: if you ever uh, if, if, you, if you have any of these that you've bought in e-juice from, from another company, keep them. Especially if they have the, the drip tips in there. Um, because you can always wash them out and use them for your own recipes. So that's a nice way of saving some additional money. But I do have to say, tinctures are not very expensive. But pennies on the dollar are pennies on the dollar and they add up. All right. Um... If this one isn't enough, I also have the one cup right here, the one cup uh, model that goes from everywhere from 50 milliliters to 250 milliliters. I have some other tools in there, but I wanted to show you that. Um, okay, for measuring, also, I have syringes, and you'll notice that I have two types, okay? One has the syringe tip, the other does not. Why that's important to have either, uh, both of them, if you can, both measure, uh, this one goes to 5 milliliters, this one goes to 10, okay? But the reason this is important is be because depending on which uh, base, when I say base, I'm talking about your VG, PG uh, that you use. Uh, just in a real quick comment, a VG happens to be thicker, the viscosity is thicker, so it's hard to get the liquid up through a syringe tip. Also with nicotine. Nicotine, same thing. It's harder to get up with a syringe tip. But I always keep a tincture like this available for the thicker liquids and that when I when I pull that out equals about one milliliter. I've already done the measurement several times so I know personally that that's about one milliliter. Um, so if the bottle is too big for me to stick the blunt tip in there, I can always pour some into a squeeze bottle like this, um, and I can pull it out with this a lot easier. So, I like to have both. One, uh, the, for this one here, uh, if you're using PG and you're using sweetener uh, or you're using uh, your concentrates, this one with the syringe tip is preferred. But have this one also, just in case, and make sure that when you're using this, that you don't then use it in another ingredient. So carry multiple ones. As you can see here, I have several of them, and that's because I use one for the NIC, one for the VGPG, one for the concentrates. I never want to cross-contaminate anything, and I hope that if you're hearing a consistent message, in my preaching from the pulpit of DIY world, uh, as far as e-juices, don't cross-contaminate. That goes all the way down to these little guys, and these guys are a buck and under. They'll last forever today, so don't. And see, I still have one that's not even opened yet. 
So don't don't scrimp there, okay? All right. Now, sorry, my my allergies are getting to me here. Uh, some other things that I like to have. Okay, this is what I was talking about. I happen to be reusing. Uh, this is one of the reused tinctures that I use. Uh, this one's a 30 milliliter, but it works great. Uh, don't have to buy new ones. And make sure, especially with these, that you wash them. They've got little O-rings in there. <clears throat> and the sweetener can build up. So you want to make sure that you wash them in warm, soapy water. And then thoroughly rinse and thoroughly dry. That kind of thing. So that you can have good functionality. Once again, no cross-contamination of flavor. No gunk buildup. So you got no nasty mold, germs, and all that other good stuff there. But, yes, reuse tinctures. All right. Let me use this for as a demo real quick. I'm taking the tincture, uh, the, the dripper off of it. I'm going to use this little funnel here. I also carry a little funnel. Uh, this, is, this one here is a little bit littler than my kitchen model. But I use this because it goes in to these tinctures and other bottles. Here, let's take another squeeze bottle, a bigger one. As you can see, here's a bigger one. And it's got a wider mouth, but check it out. See, it stays in there. So I like that little funnel because I can get my liquids back and forth, once again, without spilling it <laughs> onto the surface. Everything here is about keeping things pure and clean and good taste. And these little, little things add up at the end. So a little funnel works in all your bottles, including this narrower mouth one here. Here, let's just do that so you can see this too. See? Now, I will say that you'll probably want to hold on to whatever bottle you're pouring into. Keep a couple of your fingers up here to brace. That way it doesn't uh, slosh around or fall over under the weight. So, hold your hand up there and you can pour bracing the bottle. So there is little spillage and maybe the only thing you have is a little drip here and you can wipe that up easy enough. Alright, I'm going to put the tincture back, but I'm going to leave it out here for a reason. So, alright, squeeze bottles. We've got, okay, we have, I have a couple different kind. Alright, this is 120 milliliter and this one here is 240 um, these are important because I tend to like to put my bigger batches of juice, e-juice in here, or sometimes I'll make what they call a base, uh, and that's going to be for later on when I'm doing some recipes, and I know I'm making, let's say, just for the sake of argument, a bunch of fruit flavors. I might have a certain base of chemicals that I put down into that, and then I just add my flavoring on the end. That is one way you can use these, or if you're just making a big batch and you just want to use the tip to pour that's also good too. The bigger ones, however, I'll use for the transferring of my VG because you can see it's a big bottle. All right, so I'll use and I'll make different uh, types of VG PG as far as blends go. Maybe 50/50. Maybe it's a 50/50 VG PG. Maybe it's a uh, let's say maybe a 70/30 a VG to PG or vice versa, depending on the machine and all that. So sometimes I'll pre-do my uh, VGPG mixes in these bottles. That too is, is, is a good reason to have these. Now, some other things that I have. Uh, I, I, I love this. I love the argument that I get into with my daughter on this one. Um, it's really kind of cool actually. So, these right here come in a couple different names. You could call these uh, the Pyrex Pudding Cup or Custard Cup, but they're also known as the Clear Pyrex Remikins. All right, why this is so important to me? All right, you saw this tincture over here. This here is the pre-made one that I have. Let's just say that we've made this. I like to fill this up with hot water, and it doesn't have to be boiling, but I would recommend uh, 180 degrees and above. And I like to give it a warm water bath. Okay, I'll get into why and all that later. Uh, let's just say that my version of steeping is a little bit different from other manufacturers. Not that it's good, bad, or otherwise. But I do come from a kitchen. 
and when you add a little heat things get moving around and chemicals get to collide and function better that's the true that's true also with vaping but that is my personal opinion on it uh, you will hear different things from different people I like to use the method from the kitchen warm water and I do it twice after it cools down uh, what I'll do is in, a, in about another 24 hours I'll redo the process and I'll just let it go again that makes sure that everything's it doesn't cook but it's, it's heating up and moving and all that <clears throat> so I do keep those as well um, also I, I keep a digital thermometer to measure the water temperature and a few other things that help clean gunk and all that stuff <clears throat> okay pardon me um, yeah my my allergies been going crazy let's move everything over here last but not least I carry uh, you can go to Staples or Office Depot these little labels here's the deal whenever you buy uh, your concentrates from any any decent self-respecting uh, manufacturer um, <coughs> pardon all right they'll have an MSDS which is a, a, a safety sheet on all the ins and outs of everything including the recommended dosage when you're buying e-liquids e MSDS also refers to a lot of different things also from poisons to household and commercial chemicals they also provide these now with e-liquids and they should be available for you so let's just say if the world ended and it was the day of the walking dead and there were just little communities of people like me who are scavenging for chemicals and you're already dead and gone so you can't explain this thing here well just even doing a hand uh, done written whatever little label can provide the person that's coming in after you or maybe you have a friend staying over and you say oh it's in my cabinet go get the juice well this allows people to know what's exactly in there <coughs> in my particular case kiwi hyphen watermelon pretty pretty uh, obvious you'll notice that I also put 50-50 that's VG PG now if I was doing 70 30 I would make sure that on either or I would mention if it was 30 or 70 either one it, it you you'd put either your VG or PG uh, but for me 50 50 uh, is all I need I really should take the extra pen stroke and write that in so I had made a note to sell also the very important thing though is the 3% nicotine by volume um, that little handwritten label just avoids a whole lot of nightmare um, so I recommend that when you do your tinctures and then I just take you'll find that maybe they don't stick to glass or, or with that what whatever material very well uh, take a little little tape little scotch tape and just run it over and then when you're done peel it off wash it and it's ready for the next time I hope uh, that I've given you some things to chew on. Now you understand why I, I wanted to not get into all the uh, the different uh, stuff like mods and coils and wicks and all that good stuff uh, because this is a little bit in length as it is. But I would I would share with you <clears throat> why you can buy smaller bottles of VG and PG and nicotine. I would not I would not at all. Uh, mess with your cleanliness using the nitrile if you have if you get chemical burn or your whatever you have allergic reaction you're definitely gonna want to want to uh, use these uh, you know there, there's just all uh, these little things these little nuances that go into making good product um, so I would recommend and I and perhaps now that I've kind of run through this video I'll just make another note to self that down below I'll, I'll write out so you don't have to go back over the video again I'll write out some of the various tools uh, that I use here in the juicy vapor kitchen 
or studio, depending on where I'm at. Um, so I'll put that together for you. And, uh, you know, I hope this helps you to decide whether you want to start doing your own DIY e-juice now or if you want to wait just a little bit and see how it goes, um, you know, to put all this together. And, uh, you know, like I said, you want to save a few dollars up front. It will cost you a little bit and you will save on the back end because a lot of these things are reusable. The measuring cups, the squeeze bottles... Uh, tinctures are not expensive, but you can save the ones you already have. Just wash them, take off the labels, and uh, make sure they're really clean. So, having said all that, I hope I've given you all something to think about. I appreciate you all coming back and watching another video. And since I know this is one of my trademark little deals, I'll just go ahead and do it here too. Oh, that was cheesy. Anyway, later.